Hello and welcome to El Expo and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has been sacked. After a 4-1 defeat of Watford on Saturday, the Red Devils have finally seen enough. The Oli era is over. Oli is no longer at the wheel to the disappointment of pretty much everyone who isn't associated with Man United. Gary Neville's probably a little bit sad too to be honest with you. But what I want to do today is see who Football Manager 2022 think will replace him in the Old Trafford dugout. Will it be Zidane? Will it be Pochettino? Will it be Ten Hag? Will it be Steve Bruce? Or could it be someone completely different? So let's dive into this simulation and see just who Man United picked to be their next manager. Okay, here we are at the start of the simulation, the start of the season. At this moment in time, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is still the Man United manager. But just like that, he is gone. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has left his position at Manchester UFC because they haven't got the real licensing rights. Who have we got as the favourites? Marcelino of Bilbao is the bookie's favourite currently, 13-2. to Then you've got Yulin Lopetegui and Joachim Lawson. I mean, it's not massively exciting options there when you consider the likes of Zidane is available. But I mean, maybe it won't be one of them. Maybe it will and they will deliver. Let's go... We'll see a month or so into the future, we'll see who Man United pick as their new manager. Who will it be? Let's find out. Okay, here we are the 19th of August 2021 and there is a new manager at Manchester United and it is none other than Ernesto Valverde. He signed a three-year deal earning 150 grand a week. It says here Manuel Pellegrini was considered to be the favourite for the job but it was unclear whether the club favoured Valverde all along. I mean, why would Manuel Pellegrini be the favourite? Firstly, I mean, he's a Man City modern day is he a legend he won the title with them so he's pretty damn good and we saw at west ham he's not what he once was but anyway they have gone with valverde the former barcelona manager barcelona won a couple of la liga titles a copa del rey and a spanish super cup but that was about it it ended in 2020 from at the new camp sacked in january 2020 after a defeat to atletico madrid in the super cup but can he do better at Old Trafford? I mean, he's got a great squad, to be honest with you. He's got Ronaldo, he's got Fernandez, Sancho, Rashford, and Harry Maguire, who's a, a bit out of form. But maybe Ernesto Valverde can get more of a tune out of this squad than Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I mean, it won't take much, but you never know. Maybe it will be a struggle. Let's simulate a year into the future. Let's see how Ernesto Valverde gets on in his first year as Man United manager. Will he last a year? Let's find out. Okay, here we are, the 12th of June 2022. Season 1 is over and Man United haven't finished in the top 4. They haven't even finished in the top 5. They have finished 6th. 66 points on the board, 8 shy of Chelsea who came 4th. And they were 13 clear of Leicester down in 7th. But Man United won't be playing Champions League football next season. It'll be the Europa League for them. They've had a season where they've won 19 games, half of their fixtures. They drew 9 and they lost 10. And no one of Man United persuasion features at the top of the charts. There's no top goal scorer, no top assist getter. The best player, not from Manchester United. Instead, it was Liverpool that had the best players in the league. Let's check Man United out, see if they've had any cup success at least to shout about. Ernesto Valverde is still the manager, despite finishing down in sixth. Which is wildly disappointing, to be honest with you. I mean, considering their squad, they should really be in the top four. They were beaten in the FA Cup final in an extra time. Losing to Liverpool with Jordan Henderson getting the goal. Champions League, they also lost to Liverpool in the quarter-finals, 3-1 in aggregate. This has turned into a bit of a disastrous season. And in the League Cup, they lost to West Ham on penalties, despite West Ham going down to 10 men at half-time. So really, it's been a pretty rubbish season for Man United. They started off really well. They didn't lose a game until they played Leeds in October. And that was the start of a pretty poor run, to be honest with you. Then things kind of started to uh, go off the rails. But come the end of the season, their final game was a 2-0 win over Wolves. But all it was was enough to solidify 6th position in the Premier League. Have we made any signings? William Carvalho from Real Betis, which is... It's not massively exciting. They got rid of Martial, he went to Chelsea. And they got rid of Phil Jones. He didn't have a resurgence under a new manager. Has Carvalho done much since his fairly big arrival? 
mm, not massively. 14 Premier League starts, 2 assists and average rating of 6.89. It, it, it's not great to be honest with you. Is he the presence Man United need in midfield? I'm not, I'm not quite sure about that. The star player, well it, it's Tom Heaton from his one fixture, but it's actually Marcus Rashford ahead of Cristiano Ronaldo. Rashford 7.4 compared to Ronaldo's 7.34. The top scorer was Ronaldo with 20, then you had Cavani with 14, Fernandez 13, Rashford 13, and Sancho with 12. But Paul Pogba, he's been a bit of a disappointing performer, average below a 7. David De Gea, just below a 7. I mean, for a keeper, it's not as bad. Mason Greenwood, he's been poor. And poor little Fred can barely get a kick. So after one season, in fact Scott McTominay, he's been naff as well, but I'm, I'm not really sure about Scott McTominay anyway. Probably the surprise performer, Diogo Dallo, 21 starts and an average rating of 7.14. That is very, very surprising. What formation have they been playing actually? A 4-3-3. With Bruno Fernandes playing on the right wing. What a strange end of the season. But after season one, I'll be honest with you, it's not been great. Sixth in the league, no trophies. But Ernesto Valverde is still in the dugout. Will he survive a second year? Will things improve? Let's find out. Right, here we are at the end of season two and Man United have improved slightly. They have came fifth, but still missed out on Champions League football. But it was very tight between Leicester and fourth and Everton down in eighth. Only three points separating those Five teams. Man United there finishing above Newcastle and Arsenal on goal difference and they were two points shy of Leicester City. If they'd won on the final day they would have qualified for the Champions League but instead they lost 2-0 to the Champions Liverpool meaning it's another season without Champions League football for Man United and Ernesto Valverde who is still the manager. Going into the final year of his contract, still got 150 grand a week going into his pocket. Has he at least won any trophies? Let's have a little look at the schedule. He's still got Harry Maguire as his captain, which is... It's an interesting choice. Carabao Cup, how far did they go? Quarterfinals, where they lost to Leicester. FA Cup, they were beaten in the final last year. This time they made it to the fifth round, losing an extra time to Burnley. And in the Europa League, they were beaten in the semi-final by Juventus. I mean, that's a pretty hard Europa League semi-final. And they lost on penalties. Who missed for Man United? It was Domenico Berardi, who's clearly a new signing, and Paul Pogba, which allowed Juventus to go to the final and ruin another Man United season. Let's have a little look at the transfers, see who's came into the club. Just three signings, one of which was Domenico Berardi, 47 million, potentially arriving at 72 million, which is huge for the Italian right winger. Obviously, he was a great player back in the day on Football Manager. I mean, Football Manager 2015, you could get him to be the best player in the world. In this simulation, five Premier League goals, four assists, pretty damn good after a great season at Sassuolo. They also brought in James Shea on a free transfer goalkeeper. I assume that was just to, you know, get an extra body in. And they've also brought in Leandro Paredes from Paris Saint-Germain, the Argentinian midfielder, a bit of a shit house, and he hasn't been very good. Have we got rid of any players? Jesse Lingard's gone, Juan Mata's gone, Eric Bailly loaned out, Nemanja Matic sold, Diogo Dallo sold, quite a surprise. Pereira loaned out again, they got rid of Cavani. And in terms of first team players, that is about it. Who was the star this season as they came fifth? It was Marcus Rashford, 17 goals. I'm really surprised that Cristiano Ronaldo isn't finishing at the top of the pile here. Instead, it is Marcus Rashford again, closely followed by Ronaldo. Jadon Sancho's had a good season, Fernandez has, Varane has. Even William Carvalho has, so I slagged him off the first time round, but he's actually been pretty good. Donny van der Beek, he's a player who still can't get a kick. Three starts, three substitute appearances. It doesn't matter who the manager is, the poor Dutchman cannot get on the Old Trafford pitch for love no money. Scott McTominay, another player who's really struggling since the change of manager. Mason Greenwood, he's hit double figures but it's not quite as good as you would expect from a player of his calibre. And it looks like Fred's leaving, Fred's going back to Brazil, good luck to him. But again, I'm going to be honest with you, it's another disappointing season 
for Man United. Yes, they were narrowly, narrowly close to qualifying for the Champions League, but I mean, the points tally still wasn't very high. And once again, they failed in the Cups. They didn't even make a final like they did last time. We're going now into the final season of Valverde's contract. It'll be the third year of him as manager. Will he be able to achieve something and perhaps get a new contract at Old Trafford? Let's see what happens. Let's find out. Okay, here we are at the end of season three and there's been a big-ish improvement from Man United. They've got 69 points, oi oi, and they have came third to return to the Champions League. They've got five more points than they did last season and they are into the top three. I mean, they're well, well behind Liverpool and Man City who are out in front. Man City, 15 points clear of Liverpool to win the title. But Man United coming third, 11 points clear of Leicester who were in fifth. It's been a great season for Marcus Rashford, third best player in the league behind Mo Salah and Erling Haaland. He got eight player of the match awards. Let's check Man United out. Ernesto Valverde is still the manager. Cristiano Ronaldo is now his captain. And is Valverde staying? He is staying until 2028. He signed a new four-year deal at Old Trafford and he is going absolutely nowhere. But has he signed off this new deal with a trophy? Let's check the fixtures out. Let's have a little look. Obviously, they win the Europa League again. We will come to that as our final port of call. The League Cup, how far have they gone? Looks like they've gone quite far. And they've won it. Finally, Valverde has won a trophy. They've won the League Cup, beating Chelsea on penalties. It was a 1-1 draw in the final. Harry Maguire's goal was cancelled out by Romelu Lukaku. But Man United scored all four of their penalties. Mount and Chilwell missed for Chelsea to ensure that Man United are the Carabao Cup champions for 2024. Which is pretty good because they got knocked out of the fourth round of the FA Cup. Europa League, how far did they go? They have done it. It is a cup double for the Red Devils and Valverde. They made it through the groups, then they beat Valencia, Lille, Leicester, and finally RB Leipzig in the final. It was a 2-1 win in the Vasilevsky Stadium. Pogba and Rashford with the goals. Fernandez was sent off late on, but it didn't matter. It looks like a dramatic game. De Gea got injured. Varane injured. Fernandez a red card. Leipzig, they got a man sent off. Man United went ahead, Leipzig levelled, then ahead again Man United in the 79th minute to give Valverde his second trophy as Man United manager. And it's no wonder when you look at that, that he is once again, not once again, that he's getting a new contract at Old Trafford. He's going to be there for another four years and he's got two trophies to his name and he's once again taking Man United back to the Champions League, somewhere they haven't been for a couple of years since Solskjaer's departure. Who's he brought in? Let's have a little look. Alexander Isaac from Sociedad. Mats Rawi from Madrid. Evan Ndicker from Leipzig. Weston McKenney from Juventus. And a guy called Miguel Gutierrez from Real Madrid. What about the outgoings? Obviously we know Fred left. Juan Bissak has gone. Fairly big name. Lindelof souls for Buttons. Alex Tellez goes to Al Saad. And they've loaned out Scott McTominay and Donny van der Beek. Who was the star player? Once again, it was Marcus Rashford. He's the main man since Ernesto Valverde took over. 21 goals and 10 assists, putting him ahead of Harry Maguire, who was the second best player. And then you've got Cristiano Ronaldo, 17 goals, and he'll be retiring in 10 days' time. He leaves Man United with no more Premier League titles. He did lift the Europa League and he did lift the Carabao Cup. Was that enough to justify him going back to Old Trafford? I'm not quite sure, but let's have a look at the goal scorers elsewhere. Alexander Isaac, he's had a great first season. He also got 21 goals, just like Marcus Rashford. So it looks like he can fill the void that is going to be left by Cristiano Ronaldo. Bruno Fernandes has had a good season as well. Mason Greenwood there getting nine, but he's still not playing that much to what he probably should be playing. We're still playing the same 4-3-3 formation. Tunzevi's been a bit more involved in Season 3 and he, he's been alright to be honest with you. Luke Shaw a little bit disappointing there at left back. But it looks like Harry Maguire has responded really well to not being the captain anymore. Will he get that armband back in Season 4? What I'm going to do now is, the next time we, we've gone forward into the future, the next time you see this game, Valverde's time will be over. It could be a one year into the future. It could be 20 years. We're going to see how much longer Ernesto Valverde lasts at Old Trafford. 
Will he get a few more years and can he become a Premier League winner? Can he take Man United to the top, a place they haven't been since Sir Alex Ferguson left the club? Can he do it or will it all go up in flames? Let's simulate however long into the future, let's see how long Valverde lasts at Old Trafford. Right here we are the 10th of June 2027 and as you can see Ernesto Valverde is no longer the Man United manager. Instead he has been replaced by Maurizio Pochettino who has just guided Man United to a 5th place finish. Let's have a little look at when Valverde lost his job. He left the club on the 19th of December 2026. The only two trophies he won was the Carabao Cup and the Europa League we saw in 2024. That was as good as it got and he left after 5 years and 124 days. It took them a while to find a replacement but eventually they got their man Maurizio Pochettino, a man who's been heavily linked with getting the job right now. Let's see where Man United have been over the past few years. When we left things that came third, they followed that up in 2025 with another third place finish but then they were back out of the top four. In 2026 they finished fifth. Let's have a little look where Man United were when Valverde got the sack. As you can see there they finished fifth behind Man City, Chelsea, Newcastle and Leicester which is a very strange top four. Let's have a little look at past positions. Man United, it was a sluggish start and on the 12th of December they were beaten 2-1 at Old Trafford by Swansea City which put Man United down to 8th position which is where I think they are right now in reality. That cost Solskjaer his job and on FM22 it's cost Valverde his job as well. But based on this, I don't think Ernesto Valverde is the man to replace Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But I don't think he will be the man to replace Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I mean, to be honest, I was quite surprised when I did this experiment and he was the man who got the job. I, th I thought it was nailed on to be Zidane. But no, instead they went with Valverde, he delivered two trophies, and now he's already got himself a new job. He's the AC Milan manager. But he couldn't turn Man United into title contenders once more. Man United once again had a look for a new manager in 2027 and will be hoping for a bit more luck from Maurizio Pochettino. But who will be the next Man United manager? Let me know your opinions down in the comments below but for now that is where we are going to leave things. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo and until next time we will see you around.